Good day to you. My name is Dan Kern. This presentation is called Seeing is Believing, Making the Cyber Hype Real for End Users Using Hacking Demos. So if this was a support group, I would stand up before you here and I would say, my name is Dan Kern and I work for the government. Because you see, government can be quite dysfunctional, and government does not always equal governance. In an organization such as ours, it's interesting. It's very decentralized. We have 40 different businesses, and those businesses have various levels of risk tolerance, various levels of data that they handle. For example, you have police departments, sheriff's departments, you have 911 that deal with criminal justice information, you have a social services department and a health department that deal with personal information and protected health information, and at the same time you have the bulk of the rest of government organizations in which everything is open to the public. So in our organization, because of the varying requirements of the different departments, Awareness attendance was actually kind of a problem for us. We used online presentations, and the ones that we could afford weren't very attractive. It was very difficult to take the stock presentations that we were able to obtain and make them relevant to these 40 different departments. It became just another training event, and as a result, our awareness levels were somewhat low. So we wanted to change things. We wanted to get the user's attention, and we had to figure out how to do that. In 2013, we decided we would begin to do live awareness training. We made this available for people to come and see this live, and we still had the online versions of training that we had purchased. So this was an optional alternative. But in this particular presentation, we talked about how malware and nuisance attacks work, how sophisticated and persistent attacks work. We talked about the anatomy of a target attack, and we gave users tools and techniques that they could use to protect themselves. Attendance of these was good. Word traveled very, very fast. And what since we still had the online program, available, our total percentage only went up just a little bit. But one of the things that we experienced in doing these presentations is the cyber, is so cyber factor, people actually asked to see an attack in action. And our response was, well, we can do that. In 2014, we created the first live awareness training that used a hacking demo. This is called the fly fishing hack that cost millions. In this particular presentation, we had abandoned the purchased one, so we created an online version of this presentation for people to see if they couldn't show up to the live presentation. Lance Bittner and Ed Scotus gave me great advice in creating the hacking demos. And in this particular presentation, we talked about how attacks work. We did phishing and social engineering, compromise of a remote system. We did privilege escalation and lateral movement. And we stole personal and business data. And then we walked through the presentation afterwards and talked about all the various aspects of the hack that were preventable and then we gave them tools and techniques to protect themselves. This really took off. This was very, very, very popular. Our awareness training attendance was over 70%. So we did it again in 2015. We did Cyber Wars. It was themed after the upcoming Star Wars film. In this particular presentation, we talked about the Anthem Breach and how it affected so many people within the county. We talked about identity theft. We talked about the cloud versus the endpoint and how bad guys go after the endpoint in order to get access to that information because that's where the end user gets access to that information as well. And then we did a privilege escalation attack where we had two computers. The first computer was a user who was bent on convenience and therefore ran their day-to-day -day computing as an administrator. This particular user was Darth Vader. And we showed users how easy it was to escalate privileges so that we could easily get access to everything on the network, including plans for the Death Star. Then we did the exact same thing against a wiser user, in this case Yoda, who did not do his day-to-day -day computing as an administrator, and how much harder it was to escalate privileges in order to get the plans for the rebel attack. We also did a Wi-Fi man in the middle video, and then talked about more tools and techniques for users to protect themselves. This year's training, it's called Help My Fridge Has Been Held for Ransom. This particular one focuses on physical access and USB phishing. We talk about ransomware and the internet of things. We talk about physical access, dropping USB keys in a parking lot, dropping CD-ROMs to get access to people's systems. 
And then we talk about how easy it is for an attacker to use common tools that are already installed on Windows systems, such as PowerShell, and using their accounts to move around and do amazing things inside of a network. Then we talked about compartmentalization and browsing, and lots more tools and techniques for both business and self-protection. Impact to our organization. Governmental click rate averages around 21%. Back when we were hit with the Zeus Trojan, our click rate was pretty bad. Since that time, our internal phishing tests have gotten better. As a matter of fact, at the most recent one, over 70% of the users recognized the most recent fish and properly submitted it as if it was real. So let's talk about some of the themes for these hacking demos. It's really important that we, meaning we as the audience, become the bad guys because users love that sort of a thing. And we're going to get inside of a network and we're going to get access to personally identifiable information or some other target. And so we can turn around and sell it on the Internet. And it's important that people understand that we are going to target a person within the organization because that's what security awareness training is all about. It's about attacking the human. And because viewers are people too, they very much relate to that. People understand that it's way easier to use the human to get inside of a network than an exploit these days. And then we use our target's social media content against them. We show them how to do reconnaissance on the Internet using a number of different locations and social media as well as the organization's website. How easy it is to find out so much information about someone so that you can turn around then and create a specially crafted email that would make it very hard for them to resist because we want them to click on that email and run the code that we have in that email in order to give us access to their computer system remotely. The other thing we do is we keep these demos simple. The last thing we want to do is overwhelm a user with advanced persistent threat or buffer overflow exploits or that sort of a thing. Really, these are basic tools and techniques that are easily done. And at the same time, we keep it real. People need to understand that everything that they are seeing is very much real, that there are no camera tricks. It's very interesting over the years of doing this. I have never actually ever once mentioned the name of any particular tool because you don't have to. You're telling a story. You're telling a story of how attackers get inside networks utilizing the human being and how they're able to move around and get access to information that other users have access to. So we become them. We become the user and we show them both business and personal impact because personal impact really opens people's eyes and they also find that there's not a lot of difference between business and personal these days with regards to the kind of information that bad guys can get access to. Eyes always get wide open when they see credit card information being stolen using a common keylogger and password information and how easy it is to do that using common tools. Additionally we show them how easy it is to spy on another user see the juicy information that they have access to and then how easy it is to get access to that information by becoming them exfiltrating that information across the internet to our computer and getting full access to that information so we can in turn sell it online let's talk about making these demos effective and improving your awareness metrics when we go through the attack we ask people afterwards was this preventable and the answer is always yes. And then we walk through each phase afterwards, arming them with tools and techniques that they can use to protect themselves. And giving them tools that may mirror a lot of the tools that are already in place at work so that they have them for their own home use as well. Because we're addressing each portion of the attack with the preventative response and we're showing them verification tools where they can verify if an email is real or if a document is safe, that sort of a thing. The other thing we do is we show users how to socially engineer. Because if they learn how easy it is to do that, they recognize it because you're generating an attitude of suspicion. Let's talk about some presentation creation tips for making these demos. Obviously, the use of virtual machines is really critical here. Whether it's VMware Hyper-V or VirtualBox, creating lab environments is very, very useful to, for doing this. On the other hand, I've actually done recent demos on the live network because I was using tools that were not dangerous so people could really see it in action inside their real computing environment. Remember, you don't need malware to do this. 
Hackers need it less and less these days. You're exploiting the human being, and then from there you can use things like PowerShell and various other tools. Uh, tools are available, obviously, on Kali Linux and a number of other resources that are available to you. The other thing we recommend is not to do the demo live, because bad stuff happens. And you don't want your audience waiting for you to reboot a virtual machine. So it's way less stressful to create a video of the demonstration and then fine tune it for presentation. A lot of different tools are available out there and I'm not going to go into all of them. But I do love Camtasia and I found that there's not much that it cannot do for me. It's a very, very, very useful tool. So check it out. And of course, obviously, to avoid embarrassment, if you do use a real person in your example, do get permission to do so. Resources for training. There's uh, SEC 504, Hacker Tools, Techniques, Exploits, and Incident Handling. That's John Strand's course. SEC 560, Ed Scotus's course, Network Penetration Testing and Ethical Hacking. And of course, there's SANS Net Wars, which is a great way to learn this stuff. And you can read all about SANS Net Wars Continuous on my blog. Of course, there's a lot of training on YouTube. And really, it's about learning the basic tools. And of course, if you don't want to do it yourself, I'm sure your staff would love to do something like this. Of course, there's a lot of great information on YouTube. Presentations are already there. Sophos has done some tremendous videos that are very, very useful. And, of course, you're more than welcome to take any of the videos or presentations that I've created and hack them up, edit them, change them as you see fit, and use them as you like. They're there for your use. And that's the end of the presentation. Thanks for being here.